Joel chapter 2. You know, one of the convictions that I really have very strong in my spirit is that we are not anointed just to see the problems around us. But we are anointed to become the solution to the problem. And I really be, believe a big part of revival is not just what God does in you, it's what he does through you. You see, because God doesn't want us just sitting here waiting for revival to happen. God wants you to become a walking revival. Where everywhere you go, you are establishing the kingdom of God. And I, and I believe God is even shifting our understanding where it's, yes, God, do something new and fresh in me. But don't let it just stay in me. Let it flow through me. Let there be something released through my life that brings the manifestation of the kingdom of God here on earth. And, uh, you know, when... I started ministering in India 15 years ago with Miracle Crusades and pastors' conferences. The Lord, over years, uh, shifted us, and we years back, we had built our first girls' home in India, rescuing 50 girls. But after I got married with Stephanie, that whole ministry exploded. Uh, you know, just to give you an update on what we've seen God do now, just in the last few years, uh, with a Rescue One ministry, it's, it's a whole arm of our ministry that God is increasing. And we've moved into phase three of Rescue One. We started in India. We have 100. Now, let me just tell you, as we stand here today, and this is by God's grace, we have over 200 children rescued from trafficking. Hallelujah. And it's become the forefront of our hearts. And we have 160 girls rescued and boys rescued in India from, from the Davidasi system, which is Hindu temple worship, where they put young girls into temple prostitution. Uh, then we've launched phase two into Philippines, where we have 20 young women that have been rescued. 20 young girls plus, I'll talk, call them girls because they're girls, plus three infants that have been rescued out of child pornography rings. Then we reached out in December of this past year, and we partnered and we built the first, as far as we know, in the ministries we're connected with over there in Mexico, um, it's the first boys' home that has been established in relationship uh, with the local authorities to be the first rescue home for young boys that are being rescued out of trafficking, out of child trafficking. And as, as we came into this year, um, three young boys were rescued at the very beginning of this year. Once the home was completed in December, we made it all ready. Then they were able to start bringing the children in, and they're locating these kids. Right now, they have 11 young boys' names on a list that they have identified as being currently trafficked that they are actively rescuing as we are here today. Three have already been rescued. One of those boys was sold into child trafficking at the age of three years old. He's now eight years old. And he's been trafficked for about five years and sold out to about 20 people a day, uh, men and women. And, but now the authorities discovered this and he is safe and sound in our home. He's safe and sound in our home. So we, me and Stephanie talk about this on a weekly basis, and we hear the, you know, the testimonies that's coming back from the children that are being rescued, and we're not stopping until we see 1,500 children rescued. We're just not stopping. We're going, and we're investing a lot of our ministry into this, a lot of our, our finances we invest into this, but it's a joy because I believe that, that this is why we're here on planet Earth, not just to talk about God, but to bring God to, to see his heartbeat, to see his love, to see his healing, to see his freedom brought to other people. Isn't that why he sent us the Holy Spirit? Isn't, it, isn't that the reason why we're anointed in the first place? Not just so we'll feel good, but so that we can then go and do something to save others and rescue others and heal others and see others brought into the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. And I prophesy over you today, you're going to be dangerous. Come on now, I'm prophesying it over you. You're going to be so anointed, the devil's not going to know what to do with you. You're going to be so anointed when you wake up in the morning, all of hell's going to shake just because of the fact that you're awake. Now, I want to start this morning by sharing a prophetic word, I believe, over this year and over this season that we're in. How many understand that times and seasons shift and change in God? Right? And you don't want to get stuck in one season when God's shifting you into a new season. Right? Come on now. You don't want to get stuck. How many don't want to get stuck? You want to keep moving with God, with where His Holy Spirit is moving. So this year is the Hebrew year 5778. 
It's a great combination of numbers. If you study numbers in the Bible, five is the number of grace, seven is the number of completion, and eight is the number of new beginnings. In November of this past year, as we were wrapping up last year, we met in Dallas, Texas, with, uh, we're a part of Cindy Jacobs' prophetic roundtable. There's about 50 of us, James Gall, Bill Hammond, uh, Dutch Sheets, different ones. We meet together every year. This year, Cindy Jacobs expanded it at a word that James Gall had, that we were to make it global. So we had 250 global prophets from every continent on the planet come together for basically five days and worship and pray and prophesy. That's basically what we did, to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying around the world in one place to, to hear the prophets and to hear, you know, what is God doing and saying. And one of the words that came forth is connected even with this insight of 577A5 being the number of grace, seven, completion, eight, new beginning. Now there is a grace, there is a supernatural realm of grace that God has released over the body of Christ and over you to see in this season every work that God has begun in you brought to a place of completion. Oh, praise the Lord. Everything God has started, he will bring to a point of completion. Now, I believe that this is twofold, that it will be works that God is doing in you, but also assignments that God has had on your life. He's anointing you to bring assignments to completion. You're not just going to start something, you're going to finish it. Come on now, you're going to finish every good thing God has called you to do. You're going to finish every good thing God has designed and destined for you to do. But now you know that when some things come to a point of completion, it prepares the way for a new beginning. And what God is releasing is not just completion. He's also releasing people into new beginnings. And what the Lord showed me was that some in the body of Christ feel like they've hit a dead end. They feel like they've come up against a wall. They feel like they've hit a ceiling. They feel like, God, I've gone as high as I can go. I've broken through as much as I can break through. I've changed as much as I can change. And I feel like in this situation, I've just hit a dead end. And what God is saying is that he is turning your dead end into a new beginning. Come on now, I want you to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. He's taking the very thing you thought was the end, and he's saying, no, this is not the end. This is the beginning of something new in your life. Oh, hallelujah. So get ready, because every single, every single ceiling that's been over you, God is saying, I'm turning the ceiling into your floor. Now, I've been prophesying this. I've been prophesying this, and I know God is taking the limitations that have been over you, and he's saying those things are not going to limit you. I'm turning things around, and I'm putting those things underneath you to become your floor. Every single thing that has tried to limit you, I prophesy, decree, and declare over you today, those things are coming off of your life. They will not limit you. They will not hinder you. You are going higher. You are going further. You are moving forward in the name of Jesus. There's going to be a fresh momentum of God that begins to catapult you forward in this season. Oh, so get happy. Get happy. Rejoice. And I love what Joel chapter 2 says, verse 23. It starts with this. It says, be glad. That's a good point. That's a good place to start right there. Be glad. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord, your God, for he gives you the former or early rain in just measure and in righteousness, and he causes to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain as before. Now, I know enough to know that Joel here in this historic prophecy is talking to the nation of Israel about physical rains that are coming down. But I don't want to just look at the, the literal interpretation of the physical rain because we understand even in the, the sense of the Holy Spirit and the outpourings of God that it can also be, it could also be described as the outpouring of rain. Okay, so let's just take a spiritual principle from this prophecy today that where it says God will pour out the former rain and the latter rain as before. The former rain and the latter rain. How many here have ever had God do something good in your life? 
How many have ever experienced the move of God? How many have ever been touched by God in some way? And there's been a former rain in your life. Well, I'm here to tell you today, there's not just a former rain, but there is a latter rain. Which means we thank God for what he's done, but he hasn't finished with what he's done. There's something new that's coming. There's a latter rain that's coming. There's a fresh outpouring of God in your life that's coming. There's a fresh anointing that's coming upon your life. Because God moves in the former and he moves in the latter. And as God promises that he will pour these rains down upon our life. You know, this is one of the things I love about God and our relationship with God. Is that we never have to get stuck in one place or at one level. And we can thank him for everything he's done in our life up to this point. But you don't have to just sit there. And just thank God for what he's done. You can have expectation that he is alive and he is moving and he is doing something new and something fresh in your life. I believe God wants to release a fresh wind over Ignited Church. I'm telling you, there is a destiny on this house to be a keeper of the fire of God. And I know there has been, there has been a former fire, but there is coming a latter fire. I'm telling you, there's coming a latter outpouring, not just of rain, but of fire. It's rain, fire, and oil. And it's going to ignite... And it will not be contained. And what I hear the Holy Spirit saying today is what he's going to pour out in this house, it's not going to be able to be contained in this container. God is saying, I'm going to expand the container. Because it's not going to be able to be contained even within this house. Come on now. There are certain things written in destiny. There are certain things written in the books. They're written in heaven's books. And I'm telling you, there are still things written in heaven's books for Ignited Church. There are still things written in, in the books for Lakeland. There are still things written in the books. A ladder rain, a ladder fire that God is releasing. How many want to be a part of it? How many say, God, here I am. Here I am, send me. Here I am, anoint me. Here I am. Do something new and fresh in my life. Oh, hallelujah. Because I've discovered something. It's not our perfection that attracts God. It's our hunger for him. It's not our perfection. Look, look, God loves you too much. He will make sure he perfects you. But it's not your perfection that attracts him. It's your hunger. He'll deal with your imperfection, praise God. God has no problem dealing with our imperfection. Look, God is going to deal with your imperfection. You know why? Because he has to live with you forever. So he's going to make sure he transforms us completely into his image. But it's not that perfection that attracts him. It's our hunger for him. And here as the prophet is prophesying about these latter rains, it's connected to a promise in verse 24. It says the threshing floors will be full of grain. And I really feel the Holy Spirit highlighting this. The threshing floors will be full of grain. Let me just camp out on this for a minute. The threshing floors. Okay, the threshing floor. I mean, just the name threshing is not a very nice sounding name. There's just the word thresh, you know, it's not a, a positive, it doesn't sound positive. But I've studied it in scripture and there's tons of threshing floors in scripture, both symbolic and literal, all throughout the Bible, threshing floors. Now I'm going to give you a definition of what the threshing floor is so you can understand the full picture of what the prophet is prophesying. The threshing floor, okay, number one, is a very hard surface. It's a very hard place. Anyone here ever find yourself in a hard place? Come on now, let's be honest today. You love Jesus, you have faith, but yet at times you have found yourself in a hard place. You found yourself in a stressful place. You found yourself in a place where, where maybe, maybe, you know, hard places are not always our own fault. I mean, sometimes we get ourselves into a hard place, but other times we find ourselves in a hard place because of the attitudes of someone else, the actions of another person, situations outside of our control, cause stress, cause things in our life to feel like it, it's a, in a hard place. Anyone relate to what I'm saying today? Anyone here ever have someone have an attitude that negatively affected you? Anyone here ever have someone, you know, you know behave in a certain way that brought negative, you know, impact on your own person so you know the hard place the threshing floor is a hard place and this is what they would do the threshing floor they would take the grain and put the grain on the threshing floor back in bible days they didn't have machinery so they would take the hooves of oxen and trample the grain oh praise god they would take the hooves of oxen and trample on the grain and the purpose of that was to break off the chaff which was defined as the unuseful part so that what would remain 
was what was only useful. So in the process of, of the threshing, what was not useful was removed from what was useful. And you see, I understand that God is big enough and he is so good that he is even able to anoint a difficult place. He is even able to anoint a painful place where it would look like what good can come from this. God is so big that he is even able through that threshing to remove everything that is not useful to us. Anything that does not benefit our relationship with God, our walk with God, he is able to remove those things so that only what is useful remains. And much of what happens in these difficult places, these hard places, these places where we feel at times like we're being trampled, God, not that he sends it, but he is able to use it to cause everything that is no longer useful to the purpose of God in your life to be removed. And then here is the prophetic promise. The threshing floor will be full of grain. In other words, the threshing floor will become a place that's full of harvest. Full of harvest. And what the Lord has spoken to me and what the Lord has shown me is that he is anointing the painful place and he is transforming your place of pain into your place of power. He's taking the threshing floor and he's transforming it into the harvest. And wherever you have experienced any threshing in your life, get ready because those things, God is saying, I'm about to transform it into the harvest. Oh, come on now. The devil's going to regret trying to mess with you. He's going to regret trying to bring pain into your life because those very things that the enemy designed to bring pain God is saying uh 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 I'm not going to leave you in that pain I'm going to transform it into power and I'm going to release my harvest and the very thing the enemy tried to destroy you with I'm going to release my harvest in it it really is a season of harvest supernatural harvest overtaking harvest overflowing harvest overflowing harvest and it says the threshing floors will be full of grain and the vats will overflow everyone say overflow because this is the season the church is coming into and what a fitting word on Pentecost Sunday the church is coming into a place of overflow why because God is not a God of just enough he's a God of more than enough He's not a God of just enough. He's a God of more than enough. He's not a God that says, I'm going to fill the vats up to the top with new wine and oil. He says, I'm going to cause the vats to overflow with new wine and oil. Overflow. And you see, the new wine and oil, we know. We know the fulfillment of that understanding is the new wine and oil is the Holy Spirit. He is the new wine and the oil, the person of the Holy Spirit. And what I love about God is he says, I'm not just going to give you just enough so you survive. He says, I'm going to give you more than enough so you thrive, so you overflow. You see, when you get an understanding of God's heart, you understand even his new wine and oil in your life is not just for your personal breakthrough. Yes, God wants you to break through, but he doesn't want you just to break through and stop there. He wants to give you so much of himself, so much of his glory, so much of his anointing that not only do you break through, but then your breakthrough overflows to someone else and then they get a breakthrough. You see, what God wants to do in your life is he wants to anoint you to become a walking breakthrough. He wants to anoint you so you become a walking move of God. That everywhere you go, breakthrough is happening because you're not surviving, but you're overflowing. Look, if you have come to church today and you have just been surviving your life, stop it. Just stop surviving. God does not want you just surviving. He wants you overflowing with new wine and oil. Oh, hallelujah. This is not a time. This is not a time to hide the anointing away on the inside. It's a time to let it overflow. It's a time to let the glory of God overflow from our lives. Oh, praise, praise, praise hallelujah. 